Let's create a form on our contact page to add a little bit more interactivity to our design. Now, if we take a look at our contact page, you'll see that we have a basic layout for our actual form. And what this includes are labels for the individual form elements. You can see them here. So we have our name, our email, and our message. And a design for where the input elements will be placed. Now, in the design, what we're actually using are just shapes. This is for design purposes only, and they won't be included in the actual output. So what we can do to ensure this is we can just add a skip tag to the folder or the individual elements if you don't have them contained within a folder. The next thing we want to do is let's just close up the folders within the form container. We want to actually turn this into a form itself so we need to use the form tag. So what we can do is just group this folder or you can write it on the folder itself. Uh, personally I like to use a lot of folders just to keep it consistent. Now what we need to do is add the form tag so let's basically add a form and this will be a post now you will need some type of server-side script to handle the form in this case we've already created a simple email script so email PHP and let's call this my form or contact form now you'll see within our form container we have our layout which will not be included and we have our labels the next step we want is our actual input elements Now, what we need to do for the input elements, and let's just lock the form layout just to ensure that we don't draw the elements on the actual shapes. But what we do is we basically select the text tool. We're going to draw paragraphs to denote where we want our input elements placed. Now, you must take care in the actual style and the size of the font that you're using because it will use this to render the input element. So let's just draw the name, and let's call this your name or enter your name let's draw email oops and let's draw the message Now the last thing we want to do is draw the button. This is our submit button. Now the next step that we want to do is we basically want to add the input tag to each individual layer. So if we select the your name or enter your name, let's just add an input for this. The type is a text, so that way it'll just be a basic text box. Let's just copy that input. So email, uh, actually email is slightly different. Email, let's use email. Message, this is a text area. Now you will have to be familiar with form input elements and you can Google this, there are millions of results so we're not personally going to show it ourselves. Uh, let's do text area and the submit is a submit button now what this will do is it'll create each individual input element for our form now 100% of forms need some type of submit uh, either a button or an image so you will have to include that but you can include unlimited form elements so go nuts basically now let's take a look at the actual output once we use this. Now that our export is complete, before we take a look at the HTML output, what we want to do is have a server-side script to process our HTML form. Now you can use any language, ASP, PHP, Cold Fusion. In this case we're using PHP, so let's go ahead and take a look at the script. You'll see that this is a very basic email script. What it will do is send information to your email with this subject. You can see that you can edit this, but do not edit past here unless you're familiar with PHP. And it'll process the name, the email, the message, and also add the headers required to send you an email. So it'll basically act as a contact form. Now, if we go back to the actual output itself, and let's go and let's take a look at the HTML output. Actually, before we begin, let's just copy this to the folder because we did make it relative to the path. Let's look at our contact page. 
you'll see that what it did is it built our contact form. And if we were to actually just submit this as is, you'll see that it will error because we included this particular field as an email type. So let's go back and let's look at the PSD. Let's just hide the other pages. So you'll see that this input type is email. Now let's go back to the output. Now you'll note that basically we can select each element based on its actual type. So here we can add multiple lines of text. That's because this element itself is a text area. If we go back to the output. Now let's look at some display errors that we might get with forms. One, you'll note that we cannot click the actual element here and it's repeated in the email as well. The reason why this is, is because in our design, and this is very easy to fix, our input elements are under our labels. So basically that element will be created under the label element. So to fix this, we just basically drag it on top. That's it. Let's go back to our form. You'll note that the size of the text area is a bit larger than where the submit button is aligned but in our actual design they're aligned correctly. The reason for this is text areas are processed differently in each browser. They're not the exact same size in each browser. So you can either you know, shrink the size of the text area here, but I would honestly say live with it because you're not gonna get a perfect size. But for argument's sake, we can just go ahead and do that. Let's just shrink it a little bit. What this will do is actually just render the size slightly smaller. Let's go back to our output. Now let's do this. My name, my email, somewhere, and that's the message. Now if we send this, you'll see that what it will do is it will actually show the PHP script. This is because you need to have a server running to process the actual form, and we're doing this locally. So let's go back. Now, another thing to note on emails, um, sorry, not on emails, uh, with using scripts, what we need to have are the proper variables sent to the server. And although this might sound a bit complicated for some users, this is very easy to understand in this way. Your developer will tell you that they're looking for a particular variable. That's what you call uh, basically individual options that are sent to the server. So in this case, they're looking for name and they're looking for email, and they're looking for message. This is their actual variable, but this is what they're looking for you to send. Now this will change in each environment, but this is just a note as to how to understand what they're asking for and where to put it in your PSD design. So let's assume they're looking for basically your name rather than name, and they're looking for your email and your message. So this is what they say they're looking for, and they tell you this, they communicate this to you. We need a variable that's called your name. We need a variable your email. We need a variable your message. What you would need to do in your PSD design is name your actual input elements with those, those individual names. So for instance here, rather than enter your name, this would be your name. Here, rather than email or enter your email this would be your email your message and we should just still call this submit so what this will do is actually process these individual variables to the server so that your developer uh, co-worker can actually handle the form and give the output that you require so let's go ahead and let's re-export this and take a look. Once the export is complete, we can take a look at our output once again. So if we go to our contact page, you'll see that we can now select each individual input element directly. This is because the layer has been placed above the actual label. And if we were to submit this form, it would use the form labels that we've placed in our PSD file. This is reflective of what your developer coworker said that they require. So if they said they need your name, you should actually add your name as the form label, sorry, as the input label.